as we saw from the first two speakers today, the internet is a reality. I'm not going to say it's not. But think about your own business, the people who you serve. It's very difficult that you're going to outperform the competition in terms of price. There's always going to be somebody who's going to have a lower price. And it's really hard, even if you do all the right things on the SEO front, to rise to the top of Google. But what all of us can do with our businesses is to ensure that we are cultivating connections with our clients. They're going to get them to want to keep coming back to us and buying from us over and over again and send in family, friends, colleagues, what have you. And that's what I'm focusing on today. The most important thing is really to be remarkable. There's so much competition that we all face. If you really want people to love you and love your business, give them an experience that will be in sync with that video image you're putting up, that will be in sync with all these wonderful things that you're saying on your website. And I think there's a lot of delusion in the business world as to the customer experience that's being provided. I know firsthand because I was delusional. Before I started my word of mouth marketing company, I was in my family's furniture business. And I would look at our numbers as the head of director of marketing, and I saw a sizable percentage of our customers coming to us as a result of having bought from us before. They were coming in to add pieces onto their furniture systems. So I thought, well, we're doing great here. We have all these repeat customers, so therefore we don't need to worry about service. And I went to an industry association meeting, was bragging about our repeat customer rate to a friend. And he said, well, do you really know that you're as good as you think you are? And I said, well, I don't have data. And he says, well, you better get data. And he gave me the card of his mystery shopping service, and we hired him. And over the course of two months, they came into our showroom. And if anyone's ever worked with mystery shoppers, they're always going to pick your moment of greatest weakness, which is weekends. And we were chronically understaffed. What we would do on the weekends, because we didn't have enough salespeople on the floor, is we would pull warehouse guys to come out and wait on customers. We would have our trainees out there. And what do you think happened? Mystery shoppers came in, would wander around sometimes, because even with all these extra people on the floor, it wasn't enough. And when they finally got a live human being in front of them, the experience was less than stellar in many cases because that individual was not adequately trained for a good interchange. And over the course of two months, week after week, I was getting reports saying, if I were a real customer, I probably would not have bought anything. And I definitely wouldn't have referred you to a friend. That was a sobering reality. And it got me thinking that I was spending all of my time as the director of marketing trying to bring people into our business. And I wasn't thinking about the experience that they were having once they came into our showrooms. So it caused me to reorder my priorities. And really, when it comes down to it, the best marketing, all of this technology is fantastic. But what use is it if you're bringing people into your business and you're not providing them? with that stellar experience. So I shifted dollars out of marketing and advertising and into customer service training, into having regular staff meetings and a real focus on customer service. And when I did that, I saw our business grow exponentially. So the first thing is to have that great customer experience that people you know, will, will remark upon and be impressed upon. After you deliver that experience, it's how do you follow up after the sale? How do you keep that relationship going? Once again, hearkening back to my furniture days, we kind of had our head in the sand when it came to follow up after the sale. If any of you have ordered furniture, you know things go wrong. Things get dinged when they're delivered to your house. Sometimes the wood doesn't match what you saw in the showroom. There's all these little variables that can get, get tweaked in the, in the process of delivery. We were getting calls from our customers complaining about certain things about their furniture systems. But when we started to proactively call every single person after we delivered a product and had that conversation, how did the delivery go? Is there anything we can do? We were actually able to correct these problems very easily. And what we, what we discovered, and we started tracking this, is the people who we adversely affected the most in the delivery process became our best referral sources. Kind of a paradox there. What was going on? Well, they weren't used to having furniture stores call them and then follow through on their commitments. So by having that conversation and righting the wrongs immediately after the sale, 
that made a tremendous difference. Are you following up with the people in your customer universe after they purchase from you to make sure that they're okay, to let them know that you're very grateful for their business? Basic stuff, but it makes a huge difference. And then when we go down the scale a little bit in terms of more time, it's easy for that customer to forget about you. Uh, most products and services have a cycle time before people are going to go back and purchase again. How do you stay top of mind? Now, I started my word of mouth marketing and PR company 10 years ago, and our biggest challenge was we couldn't do expensive marketing to get the word out as to what we offered. So at the time in 2002, we started an e-newsletter, and I have been doing an e-newsletter for the last 10 years. My Initial e-newsletter, I had my mom, three cousins, and a couple of friends as my subscribers, and it has grown now into the thousands. And if you're interested and you give me your card, I'll put you on my word of mouth marketing newsletter. It's been an amazing marketing tool because you never know where people are in the buying cycle. Last month, I got a call from a gentleman who said, I was referred to you. And I said, well, who made the referral? and he mentioned a name, I'd never heard of the guy, and it turned out that it was somebody who heard me speak eight years ago, put themselves on my newsletter list. I never talked to them at that particular event, but he's been getting my newsletter on a monthly basis, and finally, he found somebody who he thought would be a good match for our services. Eight years going. So what sort of communications vehicles can you have that will keep you engaged to people who are your current customers as well as people who are prospects coming in. Now, I've experimented with social media and I completely agree with what Anthony said. If you're not gonna do it well, don't do it. Uh, don't feel like you have to do everything. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn have been great for some of my clients. I've also found that the people who are really using social media the best have a methodology in place, and I know Anthony can help you out with what that might be, but it's also important not to waste a lot of time on it. How many of you feel like you can get on Facebook and then you look up and an hour or two has passed by? I see some heads nodding. It's very easy to kind of get sucked down the trap. So if you are using social media for your business, uh, a technique that's working very well for me is I've adopted something called the Pomodoro Technique. It's a great uh, time management tool that was developed in Italy 20 years ago. And it's this notion that you work best in very concentrated bursts of energy. There's a fantastic website. You can download an app for your iPhone. But the original use of this technique is you actually have a kitchen timer, like something shaped like a tomato. Pomodoro means tomato. And you set it for 25 minutes. And for that 25 minutes, you focus on your social media. You do your Facebook updates. You tweet. You follow the people who are important to your business, but it's only 25 minutes. A lot of people don't do social media because they say they don't have the time. But it is amazing what you can accomplish if you set up that timer and that's all you do for 25 minutes and you just focus on it. For most of my clients, 25 minutes on Facebook will, and on Twitter and, and on LinkedIn is more than enough to take care of all of their social media needs. The fourth thing I want to talk about is what you're doing to grow your business through referrals. And it's great to have all of this stuff coming at you in terms of new leads coming through uh, internet marketing and social media marketing, but your best leads, and I think most business people have experienced this, are coming from the people in your universe who are referring folks to you. Everyone knows that those are the best leads for a business, are people who know you and can advocate on your behalf. But the biggest frustration that business owners have is why am I not getting more referrals? I do such a great job for my customers. I have such a fantastic product, but when I look at my referral rate, it doesn't reflect that. So what's going on here? Well, I heard that question for five years, and I have absolutely had no answer for it. Um, I'm active in a group called the Word of Mouth Marketing Association, and I went to an association event. A professor from Northeastern University got up, and he, it was like a light opening up in the sky. He said through his research, he discovered a very interesting statistic. And that is that 50%, 50% of all people, in order to make a referral, have to be specifically asked for the referral. 50%. And I thought, well, that, that seems strange. And he went on to say that the reason why that occurs is this paradox of if you're doing really well for people, they just make the assumption that you're doing a great job for everybody. 
And if you're doing a great job for everybody, you must have more referrals than you could possibly need. If that's not the case, have the conversation. I got back from this seminar on fire. And I thought, wow, that's great. I'm going to try this. It seems too simplistic, but I'm going to see if this actually works in my business. So I went out there and I made a concerted effort to get more referrals by having a conversation. Now, I've shared this with some people and they say, well, that seems really pushy. I'm not comfortable asking for referrals. Well, there are ways that you can ask for a referral that really make your customer feel empowered and good about themselves. If you let people know face to face that you appreciate their business and you would love to have more people with their personality, with their good humor, or whatever it is you like about them in your business, they're going to be flattered and they're going to think about opportunities for you. It worked for me. Our referral rate went up almost 50% in the six months following that very simple thing of asking. So I was living out this professor's dream. I experienced it firsthand in a very interesting way. A few years ago, I went to Bend, Oregon. We went on to TripAdvisor, so I do believe in search engine optimization. I went on to TripAdvisor, and I found the number one property in Bend, Oregon, according to TripAdvisor, not just for bed and breakfast, but for all properties. We went, we had a great time. It was about on the outskirts of Bend, uh, beautiful view of Mount Bachelor, nice property, fantastic breakfast, comfortable beds, uh, great experience. When we were checking out, the owner was checking us out, and uh, I was sharing with him what a good time we had at this particular, uh, at his place. And he said, well, Patrick, that means a lot to me, but you know what would help me a lot more? And this guy was ahead of, the, ahead of me in terms of asking for referrals. He whips out his business card, and on the back of his business card, he has the URL for TripAdvisor, and the URL for Yahoo Travel. And he says, if you wouldn't mind going to these websites and putting in a good word for me, because I'm a little guy. I can't compete with the McMinimans. They have a nice property in downtown Bend. I can't compete with all these splashy new boutique hotels that are going to Bend. I really would love it if you could help me out. Well, this guy has absolutely surpassed all these by the factors of over 100 reviews. He's not doing it himself. It's nothing illegitimate. He's simply having the conversation. He was so charming, in fact, that I said, hey, I'll be happy to put in a review. And I whipped out my, my little camera iPhone, and I, I walked around the property, and I shot a little two-minute video. Nothing that compares with anything that you do. It was handy cam version. It looked like the Blair Witch Project. I was quite proud of it. So I took this video, and I uploaded it to TripAdvisor, and I didn't really think much of it. And about a year later, I went back and I saw that over a thousand people had watched my little video. And it made me wonder how many bookings might I have helped along a little bit there. And it would never have happened without the conversation. So figure out ways that you feel comfortable with, comfortable with to ask people for referrals. The last thing I wanted to touch on today is if you are asking for referrals, which of course you should be doing, you need a methodology in place to make people know how grateful you are for those referrals. One of my pet peeves is I refer a lot of business to a lot of different types of businesses. The typical thing that I get back from somebody I've referred business to is an email saying thank you, maybe a couple of lines. Very rarely do I get what I always do, which is call the person up and say thank you so much for making that referral. You have no idea how much that means to me. It is the cornerstone of my business, and it's just, it's awesome. It's awesome that you made the referral. People love phone calls. Everyone's hiding behind social media now that it's actually easier to reach people on the phone. And what's really cool about calling is after you let them know the extreme gratitude that you feel, you could then ask them questions and get information back that you would never find in any internet search. Why did you refer that client to me? What do you know about that company? What pain might they be experiencing? Why do you think I'm a good fit for that particular business? You'll get back some great information. It's a five minute phone call. And then with that information, you could go on to Google and be empowered to do searches and to do research before you contact that person. And your close ratio is absolutely gonna soar when you have that initial conversation. So a phone call absolutely should take place after every referral that you get. The second thing that I do is the card. Now, I would love to say that it's a handwritten card, not an email, but a card. 
My signature does not look like John Hancock's. I don't have that flourishing founding father's penmanship. In second grade, it was my worst uh, grade that I got was penmanship. And it's gone downhill since then with my life tethered to a keyboard. So what I've done is I've associated myself with uh, a really cool web product, which very meticulously I went in and, and put every single letter in the alphabet and I put all my punctuation marks. I uploaded it to the website. And now when I send a thank you note, I can go online, I can type up a note, I see my own handwriting appear on the screen, I press a button, my signature drops in. And what's really cool is I can put in pictures. So if I'm speaking, someone's hired me to speak, I'll actually put a picture of myself with a meeting planner uh, that I'll put on the card somewhere. If it's a client and I know that they're a fishing person, I'll put a fish on the card. It's highly customized, highly personal. It is so much more effective than email. The average person gets 150 to 250 emails, depending on the surveys you read, a note. If you have great handwriting, do it that way. If you don't use technology, if you're interested in the technology I use, give me your card and just put T on it and I'll send you more information. Uh, give me your card and put an N on it, I'll send you my newsletter. But these are very simple things that I'm talking about. All of the other marketing that we've seen today absolutely is something that you should think about. But what both of our other speakers talked about was what you need to do to attract people into your business. Once they're there, What's the experience that you're giving them? Are you wowing them in such a way that they're going to want to come back and refer people? Are you following up after the sale? Do you have an ongoing relationship through some form of communication, be it an e-newsletter or social media? Do you have a referral program in place? Simple, simple things, but they make a huge difference. Thank you very much, and good luck.